Now you may be familiar with a number of names who simply will not give up on the idea of a second referendum on membership of the EU. Andrew Adonis, Nick Clegg, Alistair Campbell, to name but three. But last week they were joined by a rather unexpected name. Hey, my mind is actually changing on this. Go on. I, what is for certain is that the Cleggs, the Blairs, the Adonises uh, will never, ever, ever give up. They will go on whinging and whining and moaning all the way through this process. So maybe, just maybe, uh, I'm reaching the point of thinking that we should have a second referendum on, because on, what? on EU membership. The because, whole thing? Yes, of course, of course. Unless you want to have a multiple choice referendum. No, 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 no. Which would I, I'm, people. I'm, I'm I think if we had a second referendum on EU membership, we'd kill it off for a generation. The percentage that would vote to leave next time would be very much bigger than it was last time round. I, I and we I, may just finish the whole thing off. Now, after those comments were made, Farage was very clear. He said that he'd been misunderstood. He didn't really want a second referendum, he was just worried that one would happen. But he used the word should. What does should mean? Look in the dictionary. It means obligation, duty, the correct thing to pursue. Now, I have a theory. Farage really does want a second referendum. And you can tell why from something on his Twitter feed. Surprise, surprise. I have been taking the view, I think of all leavers, since the referendum, that we've had a vote, it wasn't the best of three, hey, can we please accept we've taken this fork in the road and will you please, our government and parliament, get on and carry out the will of the people? So the last thing I've ever wanted is another referendum on this issue. But I began to realise since Monday, when I went to meet Mr Barnier, that it's just not as simple as that because... My pessimism in that meeting with Barnier, realising he's not going to give us a good deal, was of course backed up by the three leading British businessmen who went to see him yesterday. We are not going to be offered a grown-up, rounded trade and services deal. So the problem is that Nigel is worried that Britain won't get a fair, grown-up, well-rounded trade deal. What does that mean? Well, let me explain. He wants us to leave the EU. Pretty obvious. But he also wants us to leave organisations like the EEA and the EFTA. These are things which basically keep us in the single market. Now, it would be easy to leave the EU but stay in these organisations, but Farage wants more than that. Why? Because he wants Britain to set its own trade policy with other countries and to be able to cap migration. It wouldn't be able to do either if it was in the EEA or the EFTA. Which is why he wants a trade deal equivalent to that of Canada or what's being called Canada Plus Plus. Or is it Canada Plus Plus Plus? I'm not quite sure. If the basic deal, I'm, I'm being very crude about this, but is Canada Plus the city or something oh, like Canada that? Canada Plus 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 is well, probably plus, plus, plus. would be now one plus, way of putting it. But the it's, plus, but, plus, but the plus best... pluses are difficult, aren't they? But the big problem with the Canada style deal is that yes, we could probably have, broadly speaking, tariff and barrier free trade with the EU. Yes, we could set our own trade policy. Yes, we could even cap migration, all the things that the Brexiteers want. But there's one big problem. The city would lose out. It would lose passporting rights. It would be at a distinct disadvantage in regard to the rest of the EU, the rest of Europe, particularly Amsterdam, Paris, Dublin and Frankfurt. And within a generation, almost certainly would lose its preeminence as a global centre for financial services. So why does this matter to Nigel Farage? Well, I'll let you into a little secret. Nigel Farage is a member of the establishment. He is a member of the banking elite he claims to so detest. He went to Dulwich College. He then proceeded to be a commodities trader in the city before joining, guess who? The Conservative Party. He's a Thatcherite. After fighting for Britain's exit from the European Union for the best part of 20 years, Nigel Farage is finally being confronted with what that looks like. The city of London losing out. It losing its profile and financial preeminence to Amsterdam, to Frankfurt. And that's gonna be accompanied inevitably by a socialist government. Now, is that what Nigel Farage thought winning would look like? You'll have to ask him. But more than anything else, it's those two phenomena, the decline of the city and the increased inevitability of a Corbyn government, which tells you exactly why Nigel Farage wants a second referendum on the EU. Because if he can't have it his way, and neo-liberalism and Thatcherism on steroids, He'll want us to stay and keep things exactly as they are.